my Sokka universe. Uh, in a way, I had not really planned of making a video this morning. I thought you will have enough to watch with my take on the semi-final between Qatar and uh, UAE. Which, yeah, um, there was not much to talk, but I gave uh, the video in the morning. I put a lot of my opinion in there. Anyway, uh, but there is actually quite some to talk. Um, I kind of ignored that there is a Premier League match day and I was actually happy about that because that means uh, when, when, when I whenever that there's actually some real action and then there's the small matters of Coppa del Rey and Coppa Italia. I know Monaco played Gangon yesterday. I think Gangon at one point had a 2 0 lead. I don't know the result now. Um, but yeah, uh, let's start first Premier League and then uh, we go to the two cup competitions. Premier League, that was a big match day, uh, especially when you're a fan of the Manchester clubs. I'm not sure how happy you are uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, Burnley uh, manages to get a 2-0 lead at Old Trafford, uh, only to relinquish it in the last 10 minutes. Uh, penalty that I have to give it to uh, Pogba. The way he took his power penalty this was the most, this was nonchalant and unsavable. Uh, all at the same time. I mean, just putting it, it, it looks so easy. When he touches the ball, there's a certain elegance to it that I actually admire and really like. Uh, but with this elegant uh, movement, I think it's due to his stature that it uh, seems that way. Puts the ball high up in the corner, uh, beautiful thing. And then in stoppage time, Lindelof gets the equalizer. Uh, I gotta say, the first goal by Burnley, that, that was a nice shot. I mean, it was right in the center of goal, but uh, it was pretty hard, nice shot. So, that was, so we have the winning streak of, the win streak of Manchester United is ended now. And the question is, is this the end of the Solskjaer uh, magic or just a temporary hiccup? Um, it is clear that Manchester United improved uh, a lot since Mourinho uh, went, but or was fired, I should say. He didn't go. He was fired. I mean, I think he wanted to go, but he wanted to get fired. Um, but yeah, it remains to be seen. Uh, I'm still. The next week we have Champions League, Manchester United, PSG, and this just seems like such an even matchup at the moment. Uh, it also boggles my mind. I still, I don't know. I, d I don't, I don't know really. I still think there's more quality on the PSG side, but you know, if you have a run, you have a run. Uh, but the run stop. Uh, other results. I'm trying to now remember the ones that I did not see before we go to the Newcastle City uh, match, which was the big talking point. Um, Arsenal won 2 1 against Cardiff. Uh, Cardiff, I think, oh, one, one goal was scored by Aubameyang, and Cardiff only managed the goal in stoppage time. So, you know, uh, that was kind of a safeish win, which means that our Arsenal gets some separation uh, a little bit from Manchester United, which they surely will enjoy. Um, other results was we had um, Wolves destroying West Ham after this whole Arnautovic saga. As much as I started to like Arnautovic, um, you know, he's a fellow countryman and he's probably the best player of our national team. And I really took a liking to him, but this whole saga with uh, getting away from West Ham for China is ridiculous. I would have un understood, let's say, if Manchester United is, uh, or, you know, one of those clubs is trying to get him. No, this is a Chinese club. Don't. Yes, they get, get, get a lot of money, but you get away cheap uh, with that. I don't doubt that he will put a lot of uh, effort into uh, West Ham. I don't doubt that for what it, but just it was so unnecessary. Now, you know, West Ham might get into dire straits again uh, because that kind of derailed them. He is. In many ways, their best player, I think. Um, Fulham was down 2 0 against Brighton Hove Albion and manages a 4 2 win at home. That, I think, was a big result. And I'm sure, um, yeah, Everton 
won, I think, at Huddersfield on the off. I'm not sure if it was Huddersfield, but Everton won one nil. And that leaves us with, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Uh, but yeah, I did not make notes this morning. And I actually, that was the reason why I don't like the car video videos. Because uh, having the notes here is great, but you know, uh, if you see the traffic here around me, um, let's put it that way, it's not safe fish. It's not safe. Uh, so yeah. But um, the big game, of course, was Manchester City against Newcastle. Um, even without knowing the, the result, if I, this, this was for me the pick of the pack, um, I have to say, I, for me, I know New, Newcastle just got promoted and they're having not a good spell, but I still, uh, I still feel them as a big team. I mean, they may, mainly because when I was the really watching Premier League in the late 90s, early 2000s, New Newcastle was a contender. So for me, Newcastle is still a big team and uh, simply for that reason. And they're the one black and white team that I uh, know of. And today you don't see it now because I have the big jacket on. But today I'm wearing for the first time a new Newcastle shirt because it just feels right to do so. Okay, um, but it didn't start well. Manchester City took, I think, after 27 seconds or something like that, Aguero scores uh, the lead. And it was pretty much all Manchester City uh, that came in. They have possession, but not really, uh, you know, super da dangerous and they missed many, many chances. But uh, of course, they're the better team. They have a lot of opportunities. Uh, Aguero uh, was about to score a second uh, after free kick from De Bruyne. De Bruyne was the ball. The referee had not given the ball to be kicked. And uh, so it ended with De Bruyne having a yellow card. And it should not matter much, but it could be that the game that is kind of uh, flipped the switch in uh, City or turn it off and said, okay, we can score uh, at free will. And you know, they had chances, but it was nothing that was really um, where you have to say, this is going to be a goal. And, or oh, this has to be a goal. Yes, chances were there, but you know, the last punch effort behind it was a little bit missing in there. It seemed like they knew that this is a weaker team and we're just gonna uh, roll over them. And that's a dangerous, um, uh, dangerous mindset. Well, and Newcastle with the first shot on goal scores uh, the 1-1. One, one, and I looked up the name twice and I now don't remember him either. Uh, Spanish something name. I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, I'm gonna add. If, I have, if I get the chance at work to edit this video, uh, I will write the name right here. Uh, and then it gets even worse, it's 1-1, I mean that already will be a huge result for New Newcastle because I mean you don't think you get any point off Manchester City, but no, they get a penalty, Fernandinho fouls, a uh, very well deserved penalty, and Richie puts it in the net, 2-1 for Newcastle, and that's the point when I joined the game, I actually watched the last uh, 10 minutes or so, and the weird thing is that yes, you knew that Manchester City uh, is behind. I mean, I was baffled when I saw it because I only saw it before that they were 1-0. Uh, the City was 1-0 up. Uh, quite happy with that result. So I was uh, watching it and weirdly it seemed safe. Yes, City had ch not chances, but you know, they tried, but there was uh, a certain effort was missing and you could see it on Guardiola's um, body language and that he felt, no, there's nothing coming. I mean, then uh, I think they had a free kick or, 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 or at the end, but it was all safe. So Newcastle gets a famous win. Vital win, three points against relegation that you could not count on at the moment. I mean, if you look at the standings, they moved up quite some, but I am not going to talk about the standings until we know tomorrow's result. And of course, if Liverpool now wins against Leicester, Liverpool is seven points clear of City. That's a strong statement. It is still January and City probably will have to win out, but our Liverpool needs to have a collapse of epic proportions. But yeah, it really seems uh, this is now Liverpool Super World, but Leicester, not an easy team uh, to play against. 
the last thing, uh, speaking of last, I think Wolves at the moment is the best of the rest, meaning seventh spot that doesn't give you anything. But yeah, really interesting result, and um, I like it. I really like it. Very happy about that, that, that result. What I'm not happy about Newcastle is the jerseys. Um, the jerseys themselves are fine. The one thing that's not fine to me is that they have this weird light blue spots on front and red numbers on the back. Um, that it doesn't look good. Uh, decide on the color and stick with it. And I gotta say, um, I know I always, I went, when I was small, I, uh, younger, uh, I always thought, yeah, red numbers on a black and white jersey are good. The problem is you don't see them either, unless they are really, I think Newcastle's are about as, uh, thanks to the Premier League font, as legible as, as they can be, but you know, make a white or a black box and put the box out there. Uh, that's the cleanest thing, uh, and you can even make the box, don't make it stick over the stripes, make it that it's well contained within the stripes and you have a, a nice and clean look. That's all I'm going to say about jerseys. Um, Copa del Rey, uh, Valencia, Getafe. Getafe won the uh, first game 1-0 and also in the first minute scored the goal uh, to make it 2-0. Valencia, I think it was Roberto Soldado, uh, oh, I'm going to run the percent here. Uh, Valencia scores uh, the equalizer before halftime uh, and then there Oh no, was it in the second half? I, I think it was before halftime. I watched the highlights. I know that uh, around the 60th minute, it, it was a really uh, open game where both teams could or should have scored. I mean, if Getafe scores a second, the game is over. And then in stoppage time, I think again, Soldado scores two more goals. Uh, and there was a long stoppage time because the um, you know, Tussle that ended up, I think, with a red, cassette, uh, red card. Uh, for Getafe, so yeah, probably the run of the play was very um, nice for Valencia, let's put it that way. Uh, surely helped them that they had to play against a 10 minute Getafe and that Getafe is going to some chances and all that kind of stuff. And then Milan Napoli, uh, a game that I was actually not too excited about, and I, when you saw the number of spectators at that one I mean uh, I've never seen San Siro with the, uh, where on at least two sides the second uh, tier was empty I mean the lower tier was well filled but uh, going higher up it was empty uh, San Siro is fortunately a good stadium so that there's still uh, enough atmosphere there and yeah I looked at the suggested li lineups, which were for Milan at least uh, a first team lineup, but you know, then he played um, Laxalt, he played Castillejo from the beginning, so uh, which might not all be the worst thing. I, I honestly have to say that I don't want to see Chalonovio in the first team lineup anymore. Uh, but yeah, and of course. Um, some uh, also quite some changes for Napoli, but it still seemed that they were decent squads. Uh, and Piontek, of course, made his start, first start for Milan, and boy, did he uh, convince, I have to say. Long ball, I think it's from Paqueta, who, again, offensively, Paqueta is a revelation, I have to say. Defensively, I think he, he, he can do some more work. But I have to say, the Council of Milan defensively, yes, it was really good. So long ball for Paqueta on to Piontek. Piontek scores, 10th minute. Uh, dream, absolutely dream debut. And it gets even better, another ball for Paqueta. Very nicely played. And Piontek is alone against Koulibaly and Maximovic, I think. And they don't know who should take him. So he uh, makes two moves in the, in the box and puts it into the net in the 27th. And I may remember those moves because 10 and 27, that's my birthday too. <laughs> so a uh, perfect game for me as well. Piontek scores two, two goals. Uh, I saw a little bit then at the end of the first half, but only a really teen, teen, teen bit where almost they made a third one. And it was pretty clear that Milan had a, a good plan. Defensively very sound and I have to say I start to like Milan's defense and if Bakayoko gets it going uh, Finally, 
That's that does that, that doesn't look too bad honestly. I, I there's a glimmer of hope. They have to go forward. And yeah, Napoli didn't have any big chances. Uh, yes, there were a few dangerous situations after corners, but I think the biggest chance was Milik uh, with the last shot of the game. Milan gets a relatively safe passage to the uh, semi-finals. Uh, Coppa Italia seems to be lately Milan's competition, except they're not winning it because in the final they have to play Juventus. I, yes, I hope someone kicks out Juventus and Milan gets a chance of finally pulling the hand on this trophy. Uh, it's a shame that they're not winning this more often, honestly. But yeah. Well, let me know if you agree with my assessments or what you thought about the games yesterday. Uh, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.